The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It also started to say, it says what it's not. It's not meat and drink. In other words, it's not natural. So everybody say, the kingdom of God is not natural. And so the kingdom of God then is spiritual. And the kingdom of God, though, uh, how many know everything we see in this realm is made for from the other realm, from the spiritual realm? So everything right now you see is temporary, but uh, it's been made from an eternal realm. It's been ra- made from the realm of God. And so um, we need to understand that when we look at the kingdom. So the kingdom is something that you can should be visible. So the kingdom of God is something visible. And so it, it, it produces itself in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So if the kingdom of God is not natural, then these things are to be apparent in people's lives who uh, profess to be in the kingdom of God. So we spend a lot of time about righteousness. How many know Jesus, he who knew no sin became sin so that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I want everyone who is born again to boldly confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the moment you believed according to Romans 10, 10, when you believe that Jesus is the son of God, when you believe that he was raised from the dead, you believed unto righteousness or a right standing with God. It cannot be earned. Listen to me. You don't grow into righteousness. And there's a lot of things you grow into or grow up into. Uh, you can grow. Uh, you can have a greater revelation of your righteousness. But it's like this. A lot of times people say, I remember there was a teaching going around uh, with people. It's like, well, when you get born again, you're not automatically a son. You have to grow into your sonship. Because when you're a son, that means you rule and reign in this life. But that's erroneous teaching because it always, because that, that sounds like the devil. Always trying to put off t- for tomorrow what is yours today. Um, when you have a baby and they're in their, your womb, that's when they become your son and daughter. It's not when they're 18, when they've done everything right that you said, okay, now you can be my son. Now you can be my daughter. God doesn't work that way anyway, e- either, because the moment you're born again, I said the moment you're born again, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you and I have to gain understanding. We have to gain revelation. But that's the moment when you believe done to righteous. Say it again. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so it's so important that you understand your righteousness because it will help your faith work. And then we looked in peace. And so I want to pick up here. I want to start um, in Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, I will just verse number five talks about that um, It says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Aren't you glad he was wounded for your sin, for your transgression? He was bruised for your iniquity. And then this is different. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And what I want you to know is this. You can't have the peace of God until you make first peace with God. It's interesting to me, and I never really thought about it until I started doing this. Uh, this, this. I mean, I may have thought about it a little bit, but have you ever heard anyone at the end of their life, they didn't really serve God. They knew about God. They believed in God, but they never really served God. And on their deathbed, you know, because I, as a pastor, have asked people before, are you ready to go meet the Lord? Are you born again? There's no more time to mess around. And they'll say this to me, I've made my peace with God. And I used to think that's strange, but it really is the truth. I have made my peace with God. Because see, because of Adam and Eve, we weren't at peace with God. Didn't mean that, that uh, you know, God was always out to get you. That's not the truth. But somebody needed to come make peace with God for us. And that's what Jesus did. And we went through that. How did Jesus, through his the death, burial, resurrection, through the cross, made peace with Father God for us. And now we can boldly say, God is no longer mad at us because the chastisement of our peace was on him. The, you don't have to... If you'll receive Jesus, the chastisement of our peace that was necessary, and along with the stripes that he took that you could be physically healed, you can be at peace with God. But I want to tell you this. There's a thing right now, everything going on in the world. People want peace. 
But what they want is not God peace. What they're saying is, I need the circumstances to change so I can have calm. Calm is not peace. Not the God kind of peace. Because the God kind of peace, you have that no matter what's going on. The mountains are moving. The sea is roaring. This is happening. They're reporting this. But you can stop peace in the middle of the storm. And that's the kind of peace I want to talk to you about. Because, you see, if all we're doing is waiting for circumstances to change, we are no better off than a heathen. We are no better off than an unbeliever. Come on, you and I are born again. We're children of the Most High God. We're different. We're born of God. We shouldn't live, walk, talk, and act like the world. No, we shouldn't live. Act like, talk like, feel like the world. We're not being conformed. We're being transformed. And what they want is calm. But God has not promised calm. As a matter of fact, get like it or lump it, you've, you've arrived into the last days. And Jesus told you what was going to happen. There are going to be wars, rumors of wars. There are going to be earthquakes. There's more now than there ever has been on a regular basis all the time. Pastor Mark, tell me some good news. I've got good news. But you've got to realize where you're living. You've come to the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean it has to affect you. It doesn't mean you have to live in it. Come on, you're not of this world. Your passport, your spiritual passport says you're from heaven. Amen. I know it's 9 o'clock, but y'all going to have to help me better than this. I know it's a holiday weekend, but y'all going to have to get something from this. Because this is, this, is, this is me. They need what we're about to talk about more than they need their next paycheck. And you have the answer. And you Facebook them all the time. You tweet with them all the time. You talk to them all the time. Quit letting them live, even if they're born again, quit letting them live like the world lives right now. You and I are different. We've got the answer. Come on, it's like that smart aleck kid that was in all your classes in high school or grade school. Every time the teacher asks a question, they are the only ones that knew. The, they're, they're always want to be called on. Well, you need to be called on right now. You know the answer. If you've never known the answer before, you know the answer right now. His name is Jesus. And he is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He, he, uh, he the chastisement of our peace was upon him. We're not waiting for everything to be calm. I'm just going to be real blunt with you. Um, we're not waiting for zero cases. We're not waiting for the right man or the woman in the White House. You might be, but I'm not. Because I'm not moved by any of that. I'm moved by this. Well, Pastor Mark, you need to get your head out of the sand. I got my head in this, and I'll, if you call this sand, then I'm keeping it there. You can do what you want. You can live how you want. You can be worried about what you want to worry about. But you have arrived in the last days. And you and I need to be different because there's a whole lot of people perishing. There's a whole lot of people that are so messed up. But we are the light. We're the salt. We're the city set on a hill. It's time to shine. Come on, you are. the. If, it, if these were the Olympics and this was the four by four, you know, the relay race, the four by four, you are the anchor. Somebody is counting on you to kick it. Somebody is counting on you to run. And not run with the world stuff, run with the word. Because you got the answer. And the answer they need is peace. They need this peace that's available. And so in order to get the peace of God, you got to have peace with God. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You and I's peace, our victory is not dependent on what we see. We're the just. We're the righteous. We've been talking about that. And what do we do? We live by faith. And so peace is not based on what it sees. 
Peace is not based on circumstances. So let's get into this. Are y'all, are y'all going to be here? All right. So are y'all with me? So Jesus said this in John 16, 33. He, Jesus said, in me, John 16, 33, he says, in me, in that day you'll ask me nothing, uh, John 16, 33. He, uh, he said, Jesus said, in me, you will have peace. Um, and the thing, these things I've spoken to you that in me, you might have peace in me, in him, in him, in him. So in peace, God kind of peace, not based on circumstances, a real spiritual fortitude, a real spiritual place. Um, it's more, it's the fruit of the spirit, but it's more than that. It's a weapon. Uh, you know, the word of God teaches us that it's one of the weapons of our warfare, but it's more than that. Peace is, um, it's along with that. It's a place in God that holds you, that it, it creates a fortress around you. I'm going to get to all this stuff, but these things I have spoken to you that you might have peace in the world. You're going to have tribulation. Well, that's not good news, but he said, what? Come on, everybody say, cheer up. up. Say it like you mean it. Turn to your neighbor and shout it. (laughs) Cheer up. Why? Why do we get to cheer up? Because Jesus said, I've overcome the world. That means he's overcome anything and everything that's going to be thrown at you. And so anything that comes at you, what do you know? I can cheer up because Jesus overcame that. Well, it's just overwhelming. Well, that tells me where, because does it happen sometimes? Do I ever get overwhelmed? Sure. And when I get overwhelmed, I start to get sad. When I get overwhelmed, I start to get, well, my case is not mostly sad. It's usually mad. Irritated. I told Rhonda, I was like, we need to pray that I don't become that grouchy old man that I despise. Grouchiness, irritability, lack of joy, lack of peace, all just means we don't believe what Jesus said. Because he said, I've overcome. So if something's coming at you, you need to look to the overcomer, and you're seated in him. And he said, in me, you're going to have peace. Well, i got to hurry up. Hallelujah. Let's look at this one. Um. Glory to God. Let's look at John 14, 27. John 14, 27. And then we'll get going on today's message. Jesus said, peace, I leave you. My peace. Do this. Lift one hand to heaven and say, Lord, I receive the peace, your peace, that you left me. Thank you. Not just any peace, the peace he walked in. It was his very own. So it's the God kind of peace. And you can have it. So what do we need to understand? Number one, how can, how can I, I get peace and then I maintain peace, especially in the world and in the environment we live in? Um, we talked about it, but I want to remind you. Let's just look at this. Isaiah 32, 17, the Amplified Classic says, and the effect of righteousness will be peace. Internal and external. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. Psalms 37, 37, one of the best scriptures ever written says, Mark, the perfect man. Did I hear an oh, Lord, from the front row? Let's conf- no, I was going to say, let's confess that together. Um, uh, mark the perfect man and behold the upright or the righteous, for the end of that man is peace. So you put both scriptures together, and this is what you need to know. One of the reasons that righteousness is such a... Um, something that the devil works hard at making you feel unrighteous or condemned or unworthy is because you knowing your righteousness is what one of the things that produces peace. When you know it's not about your works, when you know it's about what Jesus did, 
When you, when, when you understand and have a revelation of righteousness, the effect of righteousness or right standing with God is peace. First peace with God, but also then the peace of God. Mark the perfect man. Or when you find someone that's walking upright, understand what he's doing. Understand that he has discovered he is righteous. And the end of that discovery is peace. When you discover you're righteous, that's why I harp on it so much. About you're no longer a sinner saved by grace, but you were a sinner. You were saved by grace, but now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I need you, the Spirit of God needs you to identify yourself as righteous. Because when you identify yourself correctly, then you're going to walk correctly or be able to receive. Right now, the devil's working really hard to mess a lot of people up with identifying themselves falsely based on feelings, based on what other people say. But you're identified in him, and your first and highest identification is, I am righteous. And it's not about me. It's not about what I did. It's just about what I believed and who I believe in. I believe in Jesus and he made me righteous. And so the effect of the revelation of righteousness. So if I begin to lose my peace, one of the first things I should do is rehearse my righteousness. If I begin to lose my peace, if I begin to get frustrated or flustered or just kind of messed up or grouchy or whatever, one of the first things that will pull me back into peace is I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am an upright person, not because of who I am, but because of who he is. And the end of that righteousness is peace and the peace of God. What else can you do? Well, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 out of the New Living says this. So, so letting your um, sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Letting... In New Living, please. It says, so letting your, uh, your, your, um, na- your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So we can tell by what we're meditating on, what we're looking at, what we're hearing on a regular basis by what's happening. It didn't, now, Romans is written to who? The Roman church. So it's written to Christians. This is not written to sinners. Sinners don't read the Bible. As a whole, they're not studying the epistles. This is written to the church. So we have to watch that we don't get conformed and get back into our old nature. Letting your sinful nature control your mind. So what does that lead to? It leads to death. But letting the Spirit of God control your mind, your thoughts. How do you let the Spirit of God control your mind? Well, you renew it with the Word of God, but you think on godly things. You think on the Word of God. You think on the things of God. And what happens? It, then it leads to life and peace. The Bible says this, Isaiah 26, verse number 3, the Amplified Classic says, um, You will guard him and keep him in perfect peace perfect peace and constant peace whose mind, both its inclination and its character is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you and hopes confidently in you. So what do you got to do? So if my, if, if my peace if there's lots going on, now listen to me, there's lots going on and there could be lots going on until you hear a trumpet. So you got to learn to live in the last days. You have to, I don't believe social media is going away. I wish it would. But it's not. I just believe it's going to get more intense and the people are going to get bolder. And because the, the devil is em, emboldening people to say things and do things. And you just have to get, you have to get more solid in who you are and not let people move you. And so what do you got to do? Well, you will guard him and keep him in perfect peace, constant peace. So my mind has to not wander. Sometimes, listen, y'all, uh, I'm not talking about being uninformed. I'm not talking about looking at it, uh, not looking at any news. I'm not talking about that. But if anything begins to move you from peace, 
When you hear something, when you see something, when, 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 lots of, when you're getting lots of information in, but it starts to mess with your peace, why would you keep messing with your peace? Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you get worked? Well, I just believe we need to be informed. But if your information takes you from peace, then it's the wrong information. You will guard him and keep him in per- who, and constant peace, whose mind is both by inclination and character is stayed, 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 stayed. It's like the serpent in the wilderness. If you had a steadfast gaze at that serpent in the wilderness, then if you got bit by a snake, it wasn't going to kill you. You didn't have a choice. You either looked at the type of Jesus or you looked at what was going on and what was going on was chaos. And really, in order to save you and your family, you had to get everybody's attention on what was a type of Jesus. And so if you're going to get stay in perfect and constant peace, you and I have to put our minds. And it's harder now than it's ever been because people are giving you things. And you got to look at this and you got to look at that and you got to read this. And did you hear that? And I just want to say, have you read this lately? Because that's how you keep your peace. It stayed. And you need to surround yourself with people. If you start getting um, losing your peace, you need to have someone be able to yell at you and say, come on, get your mind focused back on this. Get your thoughts on this. Get your gaze on this. It stayed on. And, he, uh, and what happens when you do that? When we keep our, stay, when we keep our mind on him and, and we commit ourselves to him and we lean on him and our hope is in him, then he'll keep you in perfect, perfect, perfect heavenly peace. Reminds me of Christmas. Sleep in heavenly peace. Come on, Jesus prayed. Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is not a whole lot of chaos going on up there. Everything is decent, but we don't live there. But you're supposed to be. You're supposed to bring, be bringing heaven to earth. You can be such an influence by having just the peace of God for your benefit. Um, another way, so if I begin to get out of peace, I'm going to look at my righteousness Am I, am I, is my revelation on righteousness growing? I'm going to confess about my righteousness. Number two, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to see where my mind is. I'm going to see what I've been feeding on. I'm going to see what I've been watching. I'm going to see who I've been talking to. And I'm going to have to cut some things out. And I might have to do a, a read, you know, a proverb every day. It's coming to an end. You still got one or two more days left. Or I'm just going to have to get my own Bible reading. I'm going to have to, I'm going to focus on what the word says. If I went through Bible Institute, I might get out some of my notes. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to really, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I've got some daily bread. I'm going to make sure I'm reading the word. I'm going to be focused on the word of God. And then the third thing I'm going to check on is have I been doing what the word of God says? Isaiah 48, 18, the King James Version says, Oh, that it, that had us, you would have hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as ways of the seed. So when I'm a doer of the word, when the, Isaiah is telling them, when you do the commandments, when you do the word, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. I mean, James says to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. But there's a benefit of it coming to your peace. The Bible says this, that it says, if you'll hearken or do my commandments. Hearken doesn't mean just listen. Hearken means to, to hear and to do. If you're hearkening just meaning listening, that's how faith comes. That's how you know what to do. Until you do it, it's not, you're, not, you're not getting all, you're not, you're not hearkening until you hear and do. And then it says this in Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have they which love the law or love the word, and nothing shall offend them. I come out, uh, okay. He's catching me off guard these days. Ikamota, mangriste solobre, tafrando scofriche. If you find yourself regularly offended 
at the things of this earth and the people of this place and those that surround you. You are not, you are not meditating, walking in, and living and doing my word. Come out from among them and how they practice and do what I've asked you to do. If we lose our peace, I'm not doing what the word says. And this is the cool thing. He <laughs> says, cool? Watch. If I know I'm offended, if I'm offended, I've lost my peace. If I'm offended with a group of people, whether they're right or wrong, irrelevant. If I'm offended at them, I want them to get theirs. I want somebody to get them. How I many you know, if you want somebody to get them, then God can't get them because he's going to have to get you. And that's my interpretation of Scripture. But it's there. God can't deal with you. When, when you and I, when, when someone messes with us or someone's trying to hurt us, a people group, um, a person, um, an organization, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to pray for those who despitefully use us. Come on. If they slap us on one side of the cheek, what are we supposed to do? What are we not supposed to do? Well, let's, let's start a Facebook page and get everybody mad at them. Let, let's talk trash about them. Th that's not the way God works. Do, are, are solutions necessary on the earth right now and in the United States of America? That yes, you can do it the world's way and it's false peace, or you can do it God's way and have it work. And it be eternal and everlasting. And the deal is this, if individually, you have to watch, because this is the deal, great peace if you want great peace, you, got, you love the word. But listen, you can tell if you're meditating and doing the word by if you're offended. Now, you know what? If you have been offended, we have Bible Institute around here. My wife is uh, one of the best love walk teachers I know in the planet. And for 14 weeks, you can get that worked out of you. You can get that worked out of you. And if you've been through love walk and you find yourself being offended right now, then I think you should revisit it. Because I'm going to get to something, but I'm telling you, the devil knows how to manipulate, trick, beguile you, what everybody else is doing, because it's normal right now to be offended. It's almost abnormal to not be offended. If you're not offended, then you don't care. You're right. I don't care. Do I believe things need fixed? Yes, but I'm not going to take the care of it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to talk about it. You're not going to hear it in my vocabulary all the time. I'm not going to discuss it, rediscuss it. Some people like to cuss it. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not. Why? Because you can't have things messing with your peace. Because it's more than what you think. It's more, peace is not this feeling of everything is all right. It's more important than that. It's more powerful than that. It'll produce that, but so will circumstances being okay the way people look at it. I'm talking about something bigger. I'm talking about something better. I'm talking about something eternal. I'm talking about something that comes from the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about some fruit. So what are we going to do? If my peace is waning, what am I going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to confess that I'm righteous. I'm going to get back to understanding of my righteous. Number two, I'm going to make sure my mind is stayed on him. Number three, I'm going to see if I've been doing the word. Because if I love the word, if I'm a doer of the word, and then that puts me at a place where I'm not offended with anybody. Everybody say, be bold and say this, you can't offend me. Yes. See, really no one can offend you until you take the offense. Well, you, Pastor Mark, you, you know that's easy for you to say, you never walked in my shoes. Well, you never walked in mine. Mine are size 11, unless they're, um, you know, some 11 and a half, but mostly 11. But, but that's not what we're talking about, right? We could trade lives. You know, everybody has stuff. And I don't have to be compassionate for you. Uh, I don't have to walk in your shoes to be compassionate for you. And you don't have to walk in mine to be compassionate for me. No, we can't compare. The Bible says it's foolish to compare yourselves among yourselves. 
I, can't, I haven't walked your life. You haven't walked my life. But this is what I know. I, uh, don't let anyone offend you. Don't take the offense. And whatever you do, don't take someone else's offense. Because when they're over it, you'll still be mad. Come on. Like, you all remember when you first got married and after the honeymoon was over and you woke up and you're like, oh, this is real now. And one of the things we never really did because we knew better, but I see so many young couples do is, so when they start having problems, then instead of talking it out, they begin to tell, she begins to tell mama. He begins to tell mama. Everybody tells mama. And what does mama do? I told you. I can't believe you treat my baby. I mean, not saying it, but inside. You can't treat my baby like that. And what happens is, then a week later, y'all kissing and loving on one another, making up. What's mama? She's still mad. Because mama doesn't have the grace to forgive because it was never her offense. And there's a lot of things going on in this world right now. The devil is not ignorant. He knows what he's doing. Make sure that you're not picking up other people's offense. Come on, I'm... If, if I start to feel offended, what do I get? If I start to, because if I get offended, I'm going to lose my peace. And if I lose my peace, what does that mean? I'm not doing the word. What I got to do, I got to get my mind stayed back on the word of God. And I got to begin to understand again my righteousness. As Psalms 34, 14, it says, depart from evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. So if I've ever lost my peace, number one, I got to make sure I'm not sinning, practicing sin, living in sin. But the other thing, the last part of this is what I want you to see. I have to pursue peace. So how do, I, how do you pursue, pursue peace? Well, Jesus is peace. He's the prince of peace. I, I, it didn't say pursue calmness. I didn't say pursue all circumstances being right. If I'm going to pursue peace, Jesus is the prince of peace. So I'm going to pursue him. And when I catch him, which I already have, he is my peace. And what kind of peace? He said, my peace, I leave you. So if I'm looking to him, the author and the finisher of my faith, and and if I'm walking after him, if I'm seeking him, I am seeking peace. I'm going to pursue it. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. You all know this is very familiar. In order to have the peace of God, you first have to have peace with God. Then you have to understand you're righteous. You have to not, nothing new. You got you to keep your mind stayed on him. You got to be a doer of the word. And then Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing or don't worry about, it, uh, don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall... Um, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So number one, um, let's talk about worry. Worry means that worry is, number one, worry is a sin. Number one, worry is a sin. Worry is so far from faith. Worry leads you to fear. If faith is the raw material God needs, then worry and fear is the raw material the devil needs. And so in this hour with so much going on, you have to make sure that you're not giving the devil any raw material. Because faith uh, is the raw material that God needs in your life to bring you what he has promised you. But the devil then will need this too. He needs a raw material. And your raw material is worry. Now, what does worry look like? Well, it looks like um, meditation in the opposite direction. Meditating the word of God. And so what does that do? The devil, begin, he'll, he'll bring a thought. Uh, he'll bring a circumstance. He'll bring something to your attention to get you to begin to think over it. And when you begin to think over it, you begin to see an outcome if this happens. Well, if this happens, then this could happen, then this is going to happen, and then you begin to worry. And then if the devil can push you hard enough, then he'll get you to get others to worry with you. And then you begin to corporately worry. And then the thing about it is when worry gets strong enough, then you begin to take corresponding actions to prepare for what you're worried about. 
And when you begin to do that, it is assured, just like faith, it is going to happen. Job said, the thing that I have feared the most has come upon me. This is nothing to mess with, especially in the season that you and I have come into. Worry has got to be something that you and I do not do. Now, you've heard me say this before. I grew up um, in the world champion worrying home. I learned to worry from the best of them. Um, I knew how to worry. I did it so well that when I was a freshman in high school, they had to put me in the hospital for three weeks because I literally worried myself sick. I understand this. And guess what? It is still something that I have to deal with all the time. It is something that I deal with, especially in particular areas. I have to stay on top of it because when something comes, it'd be 15, 20 minutes later, and I'll be like all worked up about something. And I'm like, how'd that start? It started with a thought. It started with a picture. And then when you get there, it's very hard to discern what is God and what is your soul because your soul starts getting so loud because you've allowed the worry, the circumstances to get in the middle of you. And you got to get rid of that. That's why he said, you know, we're not supposed to be anxious about anything. How many things should you be anxious about? Well, you need to be anxious about a, a disease because that disease kills people. No, you're not supposed to be worried about it. Well, except for that because this is serious. This is serious. Jesus in the back of the boat. Y'all hear? Jesus in the back of the boat sleeping during a storm. What did the fishermen, the experts say? They came back, and this is what they said. And this is what the devil wants you to get to because he, listen to me. What was the human, the, the human being side of them? What did they say? Don't you care? Don't you care? You want to irritate some people these days? Don't get caught up in all their cares. Don't get caught up in all their doomsday stuff. Don't get caught up and everything is over. You know, we just need to hunker down, go buy six more guns, uh, get a stock room full of food because we're all going to die. We're all going to die. We're all going to. Yeah, you're all going to die. One day, if Jesus don't come, you're all going to die. But you can die on your terms. You don't have to get all worried about everything. Listen to me. Uh, <laughs> Ah, the mountains roar. I mean, the seas roar, the mountains quake, all that. But it's not going to come near you. Come on. Are you Psalms 91 people? Amen. I'm not talking about being foolish. I'm not talking about being ignorant. You know, God gave you a mind. Use it. Renew it first, then use it. Um, you know, but, but what I am saying is this. I'm... I'm we, you and I have to make sure that we don't have any worry or care in our life. How do we get rid of it? We cast it all on him. Why? Because worry and peace don't work together. You can't worry and be in faith. If there's any concern, if there's any fear, if there's any worry about something, and, and you know what? Well, I'm just worried in this area. Well, worry in any area will seep into your faith walk, I guarantee you. So don't let any worry, any concern. Well, Pastor Mark, we need to be concerned about this. This is serious. This is serious. This is serious. This is serious. That's what they were telling Jesus. This is serious. Well, I just think you got to be careful because, you know, you don't want people to think you're not taking it serious enough. Well, what are they doing? If, if, you're, if it's so serious they're worried about it, they're not trusting the Lord. You can be wise because people say, well, you need to use wisdom. Well, it just depends on who's you're using. The wisdom of this world is not the wisdom you're supposed to be using. And I'm just going to throw it out there because you're all looking at me so strange on this holiday weekend anyway. You need to pray about everything you do. You need to know what you're supposed to do because there could be three people sitting in a row and the Holy Ghost will tell each one of them to do something different concerning their life. And you need to quit looking at everybody. And just because God told you something to do, for you to do doesn't mean he told everybody to do it. You stick with the word, do your thing under, you know, under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Peace be unto you. Calm down. Praise the Lord. But what if they don't? I don't know this, but I, I don't know if you know this. You can't control everybody else. You can barely control yourself. How do you think you're going to control everybody else? Get them to do what you want them to do. You can't live that way. You can only respond. 
and be, and be led by the Holy Ghost and be a person of the Word and change the people. What are we talking about? We're talking about peace. Everybody say, I will not worry. Come on. I'm not going to have any anxiety. See, I, you got, now you got to work on this. You got to work on this because it comes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It says, so be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer. So instead of worrying about it, I'm supposed to pray about it. By supplication. What are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be giving thanksgiving. We're supposed to give in praise. God, we're ready to open some doors for us. Let your requests be made known to God. And when you do that, then the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard, and the Amplified says, garrison your mind. So if my mind is not garrisoned, I'm not walking in the peace of God. And that really probably means I'm worrying. And let's call it what it is. It's worry. It's worry. It's worry. And worry will uh, cause your faith not to work. So Romans 15, 13. And the Amplified Classic says this. Romans 15, 13. May the God of all hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope, a joyful, confident expectation. May the God of your hope, come on, everybody shout, hope lives. Come on, I have a joyful, confident expectation. And then, so fill you with all joy and peace in believing. How can you tell if you're in faith about something? These two words. You have joy and you have peace. Not that there's no circumstances. Because your faith is not dependent on what it sees. Your faith is not dependent on what's going on around here. So it doesn't matter the circumstances. It doesn't matter, you know, um, what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. If I'm believing, how can I tell if I'm believing? I have joy and I'm being led by peace. This confident, joyful expectation, this knowing on the inside of me. It's like this. How do you know you're born again? How do you know you're born again? Well, one scripture says that, you know, that you love the brethren. But 1 John uh, 5 and 10 says that you have a witness. How, if I were to ask you, are you born again? You'd say yes. Well, how do you know? Well, I just know. What is that? You have made peace with God. Therefore, you have peace on the inside of you. When it comes to when you die, you know you're going to heaven. That peace, you can locate it. You're not, when you have that peace... You know, when, when even though uh, we're not getting any loads up today and nobody's dying today or in the near future, the, the, the truth of the matter is, if you were to die, you have peace that you know where you're going. That is your, your spirit, the spirit of God, Romans 8, 16, bearing witness with your spirit that you're children of God. What does that bring? Peace. Peace. I know that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I've never seen it, but I have peace that I'm going to heaven that peace. So you can locate it because you have, by faith, received Jesus as Savior, made him the Lord of your life. You can locate that peace. It's in you. You know it's there. The same way any other, other thing you're believing God for. When you believe that by the stripes of Jesus, you're physically healed and well. When you have peace on the inside, because a lot of times people want, well, if I'm healed, then it'll change in my body. Well, if that's what you're looking for, I don't know. I can't tell you how many times that I've had people say, well, Pastor Mark, I've got a test. I need you to pray that I'll get a good report. And sometimes I don't have the freedom or the luxury or the time to tell them, but I don't always answer that because, listen, reports come, reports go. I had, I had this one minister friend. I love them, but, you know, they're like always on the report. Pray for my report to be good. Pray, And, and one time we just had to say, I'm not doing it. Because if it's bad, you're going to be devastated. You have a report. You have a report. But you have not a report just about healing. you got a report about everything. And if you believe that report, it will keep you at peace. This is what I know about the last days. I guess for me it's just a comfort zone because I've preached it for 30 years. 
I personally know that the Lord is coming for a glorious church. You couldn't talk me out of that for anything. I've studied it too much. I know too much about it. That means right before Jesus comes, we are having revival. That means the power of God is going to be on the church in such a way that it's going to be greater than the first rain or the, the um, pouring out of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. It's going to be better than that. Now, I don't know if you believe that, and it doesn't really uh, move me if you don't, because I believe it, because I know it, and I'll have, I'll have my own if I can't get anybody to go with me. But I got you all, and we're all going together. I know that. So I have great peace no matter what it looks like. I know in the end, we're having a glorious church. And even if Jesus tarries and and in my lifetime doesn't come, then this is what I know. It's going to get gloriouser. And that's not a word, but it's going to get gloriouser and gloriouser and gloriouser. Not weaker and weaker and weaker. It's going to get more powerful. Right? And so... I'm just trying to help you out, y'all. I, 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 want you to, I want you to maintain your peace. And if, I, if you walk into, and one of the things with Pastor Rhonda and I were young pastors, we didn't know much, still just learning, but we got a hold of this. We, we figured out that when we go into a situation that looks tough, and, we've look, and we have had some tough situations, where people call us and you just don't feel like you have the answers or if the Lord doesn't say something, what are we going to do? So we decided this a long time ago. And I think she had this in her heart and we just kind of lived by this. And I I don't know, uh, but this is what we decided. Whenever we walk in the room, peace walks in with us. And I cannot tell you how many times just by believing that simple thing, the atmosphere, the conditions all changed. But see, that's not because we're preachers. That's because we believe something. Because I've been in a lot of rooms when preachers walk in. They can cause just as much chaos as anybody else. Especially if it's not being done the way they think it ought to be done. So it's not about being a preacher. It's about believing something. Listen to me. If If you don't get anything else I say today, listen to me. Your friends... Your family, your coworkers, your neighbors need you more than they've ever needed you in your life. And the peace of God that you carry, that you know, they need that now more than just about anything. They need to be saved. But if you can show them what the peace of God looks like and be like Jesus. You remember, they tried to get him. They love Jesus, but like, don't you care? Don't you care? And then he got up and did what? He said to the storm, peace. Come on, everybody say, peace. Be still. Now, that doesn't mean you can control everything everywhere, but you can control what's going on in your life, in your house, in your car in your mind, in your heart, and it'll begin to influence those around you. You are a carrier of the peace of God, which is not just uh, this, this everything being all right. It's a spiritual force that changes the storms of life. And you're the carrier of it. Because Jesus said, my peace, I leave you. And everybody, even if they're born again, they're not walking in it. I would say most Christians right now are not walking in this peace. They're being conformed by the world. They're worrying about what the world worries about. They're distraught about what the world is distraught about. It can be fixed. The Lord can take care of it, but not from a place of worrying with them, not in a place of getting upset like they get upset. You can be angry and sin not. You can want something to be changed and it needs to be changed, but you gotta do it from a different way. You gotta do it from God's way. And God's way is eternal. 
God's way works all the time. What does that mean for each one of you individually? It might mean something totally different. You've got to find out what God wants you to do about the situations of this life, and you've got to walk in it, but you've got to do it with the peace of God. And when you do, man, when that starts catching, when that starts moving, it'll change things in your life and people around you.